Joining me now is Bill Fletcher with Unisource Mortgage. Welcome, Bill. We're thrilled to have you with us. It's always great to be back in the hot seat, Jen. So I'm particularly excited about our topic today as uh, someone who has two self-employed people in our household. Um, the, today we're talking about the resurgence, right, of the self-employed borrower. So tell me the good news. I love good news in the mortgage business. Well, exactly. What we have seen recently in the last two quarters is, is really, just as you said, a resurgence and self-employed borrowers coming back into the real estate market to either refinance their homes or purchase other homes. And uh, we see quite a lot of diversity, whether they're, they're young, they're old. You know, the, uh, the, the recession hit a lot of people, yes. uh, but it didn't hit anyone more than the self-employed borrower, those small businesses that are really the backbone mm -hmm. of our community. So it's been nice to see that resurgence come about uh, for a number of reasons. There, some things are changing to make these self-employed borrowers, they're more successful, right, getting loans than they have been in a long time. So can you tell us a little more detail about that? Well, one of the traditional uh, setbacks that self-employed borrowers have encountered is the fact that traditionally uh, lending guidelines have required them to produce the last two years of tax returns. Okay. And so when we do that, uh, we have to average the income over those two years to arrive at a qualifying income. And what we've seen recently, specifically with Freddie Mac, is that if the self-employed borrower has at least 5% down mm -hmm. or 5% equity, we are getting approvals based just on whatever those tax returns reflect for income for the most recent tax year. Okay. And that's, yeah. been, that's been a huge thing for borrowers, obviously, uh, oh, who, yeah. who may just be in it or have been in their business for a few years where well, maybe when you have a young business, yeah, you're not going to roll out of the gate usually showing a ton of income the first year, especially if your accountant's any good. The whole point but, is not to show so much income, but um, yeah, that two-year average has taken down many a, a deal in the past, so that's good news. Now, as a self-employed person and with a family of two self-employed people, what, is there anything that we can do to increase our qualified income? You know, if we're looking to talk to our accountant and say, okay, you know, we want to show more income this year to buy a house, are there any tricks or things that we can do to do that? Well, before we get to that point where we're looking at, uh, at the deductions you're writing off uh -huh. or how to report your income, we want to take a look and see what can we do under uh, underwriting guidelines to improve that bottom line that's consistent okay. with those guidelines. And so there's really a few things we can do for the self-employed borrower. Uh, number one, when we're talking about write-offs for depreciation, mm -hmm. we will add that back into their adjusted gross income, okay. even though they're writing that off for tax purposes. Okay. All right. The second thing is if they have a, a net operating loss carryover from a previous year, mm -hmm. regardless of whatever that amount is, we will not count that against them in their qualifying income. Okay. They're writing that off on their tax return, we'll add it back in so it doesn't negatively affect them for that current tax year. And we're running out of time, but um, rumor has it, best of Bluffton? Best of Bluffton, uh, I can't confirm or deny official announcement is but June 3rd, but we're it. very okay. excited yes. uh, and appreciate the support of our community. Thanks, Bill. It's always a pleasure when you're here.